Hi everybody, my name is Anushka. Today I'm going to take you through a simple tutorial on how we can use spreadsheets to do some physics calculations and produce graphs. For today's example, we will calculate the theoretical velocity of a body during freefall over a period of time. We'll also draw a graph of this velocity versus time and eventually end up with what you see on the screen in front of you. So let's begin with creating a new spreadsheet of our own. The grid you see in front of you is what we call a spreadsheet. Each box or cell in the spreadsheet is referenced by the letter of its column and the number of its row. For example, the cell I have selected right now is cell A2. So let's begin with entering values for time. Don't forget to include the title with the appropriate units. Our first value of time is 0 seconds. Our second value of time is 1 second. Time keeps incrementing in this manner. That is, it goes up by 1 second as we go along to the very end. We could enter these values manually by hand, but this could get very tedious if we have numerous values of time to enter. Instead, what we do is we use a feature of calc that enables us to automatically enter these values of time. All we do is select the first two cells, place your cursor at the bottom of the second cell, that is cell A4, and drag it down to the number of time steps we want. Let's say we go up to 25. And there you have it, all your values of time in increments of one second. Our next step is to calculate the velocity of the body. Once again, don't forget to include the units. Now we know from physics that the velocity of a body at constant acceleration can be calculated easy, easily using a simple formula. V final equals to V initial plus A T where A C is our constant acceleration and T is our change in time, that is the time that has elapsed since we began. Now let's transfer this formula over back to our spreadsheet. V final equals to V initial plus AT. To calculate the velocity now, we don't need to do it manually. We, all we have to do is simply enter the formula here and calc will calculate the value for us. In order to do this though, we need to define our constants, v0, that is our initial velocity, and a, our theoretical acceleration. Now we know that the body is in free fall, so the acceleration in this case is that due to gravity. and the value we know is 9.8. We also want to define our initial velocity v0 at 0 meters per second. Now all we have to do is simply enter the formula. When entering the formula into a cell always begin with an equal sign. So we know that our velocity equals V0 plus AT. So click on the cell that has the value of V0, which in this case is I3. Add that to I2, which is the cell that has the value of A. Multiply that by the corresponding time, which in this case is cell A3. Press enter and there you have it, your velocity calculated. Now once again, we could enter this velocity manually in each cell, or we could use the drag down feature that we used to enter the time. However, when dragging down cells that have a formula in them, you need to be careful. When you want a value to be kept constant, you have to be sure to include a dollar sign. Let me show you what I mean. In our formula, we know that the values of velocity 
that is the value of initial velocity, and the value of acceleration are constant. They do not change over time. We therefore wish to keep these values constant throughout the calculations. We therefore include a dollar sign before the cell reference for each of these values. So we include a, cell, a dollar sign before the cell reference for initial velocity, I3, and we include a dollar sign before the cell reference for the acceleration, I2. We do not include a dollar sign around the cell reference A3 because A3 is not constant. That is, A3 refers to the time and the time keeps changing as we go along. Once you have entered the formula, place your cursor at the bottom right of the cell and drag it all the way down to the end of your time steps. And there you have it all your velocity values calculated easily for you. Our next step now is to insert a graph of this velocity versus time. To do this, click on the Insert tab at the top, scroll down and select the Chart option. Remember, when drawing a chart, you must always select the XY scatter and make sure that the Points Only choice is selected. Click Next and select your data range. Your data range is the range of values that you use to draw your graph. Click on the little button there that says Select Data Range and choose your data range from the first value of your time to the last value of your velocity. Click Finish and there you have your chart generated for you. To complete the chart, we need to do a few things. The first step is to add a title and axes. Right-click on any white space in the chart area and select the Insert Titles option. Let's say we'd like the title to be Free Fall Velocity versus Time. We know the x-axis represents time in seconds and the y-axis represents the velocity in meters per second. Click OK and there you have it. Your chart is labeled, has both a title, axes and units. The final step now is to get rid of the grid lines so that all we have in the chart are our data points. To do this, right-click on the y-axis Select Format Major Grid and scroll up till you see the invisible line style. Select that, press OK and there you have it. Your final graph of all your data points and all your velocity values calculated easily and quickly.